holding back a big ass angry tigress by me. I heard screaming outside my crack motel room door and poked my head out and saw that seven or eight other motel inmates had poked their heads out of their doors. Not that screaming is so unusual here, but being four in the afternoon, it's a little early for crack motel screaming. Down the hallway, past the lock swimming pool that is used as nothing more than a giant wet ashtray, past the courtyard that is used quite often as a staging area for the sheriff's deputies, and then later on as a gathering place for crackheads to share the glass pipe. Almost out in the parking lot were two women screaming at each other, their men holding them back from mutual combat. The young thin one was hopping around like a mongoose as she screamed her insults at the older, fatter one with day-glow orange hair, trying, it looked to me, to find an open space between the barricading men to land an overhead blow on the orange-haired lady. The older lady's big bubble-butt ass jiggled like jello every time she stomped her foot down, and from forty feet away I could see the mad dog saliva spraying from the older woman's mouth as she called the younger woman a hoe. You a hoe. No, you a hoe. No, you a hoe, bitch. The discourse was not particularly illuminating as to why the women were fighting. Then the younger woman's man got into the argument as the younger woman jumped back and displayed several sweeping mongoose gung fu moves she had apparently seen on TV. One of them I recognized as the crane from The Karate Kid. She don't have to be no hoe, mongoose's man yelled. I takes good care of my woman. She don't have to work a lick if I don't want her to. We doing good, real good. Then, while you live in this dump, you doing so good, the older woman asked. And I thought the logic was impeccable, unassailable. But Mongoose's man, a sturdy-looking rag-topped brother, surprised me when he shot right back. We just passing through cheer, but you'll be hoeing out of this motel come next millennium. Lord God Almighty, I heard the older woman's man exclaim, because I knew that he didn't want to have to tangle with the ragtop kid, probably a gangbanger, and I knew that he knew that if he didn't, after that insult, that his orange-haired woman would make life hell for him in the weeks to come. Hell for him. The older man was puffy and pot-bellied from too many years on the couch. He was in no shape to tangle with any hot-headed gangbanger today or tomorrow, or the next day. But his salvation came at the whim of the mongoose woman, who twirled away on some half-remembered appointment, drawing her rag-topped man away with her, leaving the old man, metaphorically, holdering the still smoldering tail of his day-glow orange-haired Tigress.